Frankenstein, press the count and find a way. Take his monster work today. He solves this monster mania. He can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count to do my duty, to always obey the laws of the werewolf pack, and to never last until Brucey lives once more and, and takes his rightful place in the annals of the distinguished, distinguished monsters. monsters. And I can once again return to my most glorious of homelands, Transylvania. Gory, gory Transylvania, where wo- werewolves and... Oh, I forget the darn thing. I was the youngest of five boys from a vaudevillian father and it kind of rubbed off with all the fellows, every musician, singers, actors and uh, I wanted to be a lawyer actually and it was later in the game, I was about 19 and uh, going to school and uh, I got a call from a, a buddy of one of my brothers who was a group singer and he said I'm forming a quartet, what do you think? I said yeah sure, why not? Time for you know what? Grammar Slammer Bammer. I remember thinking at the time, when he was doing Sonny and Cher, I thought, this is great. Billy is going to take off. Because Billy's the kind of guy who really deserved to take off in a big way. A lot of Canadians have done it since. In my mind, there is no reason why Billy Van couldn't have become one of the legends of, say, Saturday Night Live with then a movie career and everything else. He's got talent to spare. He was the show, really. Billy was really the show. Didi. Didi. What does it sound like to you? Sounds like a frog to me, master. You're absolutely wrong, Igor. It sounds more like a frog to me. He made up a lot of stuff. The guy was a great ad libber. Like, uh, As far as I know, we didn't really have a formal script. We basically had a concept, and he would go with it. So a lot of the stuff that's on there is just, it's just him. It's just him doing his thing. Yeah, I is, master. What kept you? Well, master, I was downstairs cleaning up and sweeping up the dungeons. Well, I don't want you to do that. I have other plans for you. Yes, master. Now, if I can only remember what they were. Let me think, 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 think. Think. I've got it. Of course, I know what I wanted you to do. I want you to phone the weather bureau and find out what the weather forecast is. Yes, master. Be quick about it, big fellow. To begin with, it was about 30% scripted. And as we went on, start talking 10, 5%. But the entire show, and I thought this was the genius of the show, was that there was no show, there were a bunch of parts. You would go into the studio that day and do as many of that segment as you could do. So Billy and Fishka would go into the studio one day or for a number of days and do nothing but openings or nothing but closings or nothing but, you know, um, Griselda cooking sketches. Hi there! Now we've really got a special one for you today and we call it a oh, Roger and Rhonda Roddy's a rental room rip snortin' rootin' tootin' ratatosaurus recipe. <laughs> and it's called Grand Ganges Slop Frumpets with lava oil topping. 
Mmm, sounds scrumptious. And the ever-increasing Walt. You had to have Walt with all things. Because the crew would make up all these things. They'd write the most ridiculous things. I think they were half out of their bird, you know. And I just look around and find something, read it, and use it. I didn't know what the hell was in there. these things without Amazon Pilgrim ants? <laughs> Ooh, an abundance of them. The best time I had on the show was doing skits with Billy as the Count with Gronk. Uh, because again, there was a script, but both of us now, would just go like two large almost anywhere with that. I mean, to the point where we would, way, uh, a few times we did break each other up and we'd have to stop. Down the mountain. Down the mountain. Sure. I wonder how they got the boats up there. No. No, they don't get boats up there to come down mountains. They're they on go, the water. They go and we don't have the water up in the mountains. <laughs> The original masks that he wore were one-piece latex masks. I tried to work with them, and there was no way. There was just no way. Finally, they got the brainstorm to get a real pro to do it, and they flew me to New York to a fellow named Bob Layden. And Bob was the understudy to uh, James Smith, who did Dustin Hoffman and Little Big Man, that, those prosthetics. And this man was brilliant. He really knew his stuff. and. And uh, although uncomfortable with the glue, it was still a hell of a lot easier than what I had previously. When I'm calling you... Ah! I remember long days of work. I remember a lot of fun working with Billy doing the various segments that we did. We shot for nine months, uh, 130 hour-long shows, which is a lot of material. I can honestly say it was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was a grind. The first couple of months, it was really fun. But then, you know, when you have to start ad-libbing your stuff. But my sanity really was the crew. I mean, we were like brothers. We had a lot of laughs, I must admit, but it was hard work. It was very hard. I'm glad I did it. I don't know if I want to do it again. Everyone gets letters but me, and I'm a count. Don't I count? flabbergasted about that. I mean, to think that I, in, in some work I've done, would influence anybody that much. Uh, it's really very flattering. I'm, I was amazed when you showed me that stuff. I had no idea that those emails were coming in. And it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. It makes you kind of feel proud of what you did. Out of sight! Well, I never, I never think of it as famous. Uh, to be recognized by my peers and people on the streets, very flattering, very flattering, but uh, I don't live there. I'm just a guy making a living with what I do, you know. <clears throat> I don't know if there's anything else I really want to do, but uh, as far as attaining any fame, I don't know, I don't know. I wouldn't say I ever hit that. I, I think I've had a taste of some of the big time with the Sunny Cher show. That's probably the most impressive thing I did, other than Hilarious House. And, and that was a, that, that's a sleeper. That's a real sleeper because I, I have people who stop me on the street and say, they won't say Billy Van. They'll say, oh, Mr. Dr. Petfet, or Wolfman, Griselda, whatever, you know. So that's kind of fun. And then I throw back the voice, of course it's the count. You can count on it. <laughs> I'm a ham. <laughs> We'll have blue skies smiling at us. I can't believe that people would have said, we don't need you. I can only guess that he decided to stay in Toronto or maybe with his family, or I don't know, maybe he had family obligations. I have no idea. It's just one of those things that 
you know, being a, a person who's worked in the media for over 26 years and still a follower of, of things, radio, television, and show business, I keep sitting there saying that that's one of the big wrongs of our era, that Billy Van did not become a superstar because he's got everything it takes to be exactly that. Well, maybe. Welcome. Welcome to the library. Hello, Horace. Hello, Polly. And hello to you. Are you ready to be frightened out of your wits? Because I am the boss frightener. It was the wolf of the uh, librarian. Now, I told you we tried to make 16 segments every day. And I desperately wanted to get out of this, this makeup. Ready to be on this one day, I got on a fantastic roll because the character, if you recall, comes in, knocks the books over, goes over, and just whips open a page, and there's some dumb little poem, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, whatever. Anyway, I finished 58, and then I say from the control room, okay, Billy, that's a wrap. And I said, no, no, it's not. I want to do one more. He said, no, no, man, it's okay, we got it. It's a wrap. I said, no, one more, please. Okay. So I went, and I just grabbed the book, and I threw it open, and I recalled a poem from when I was a kid. Now, are you ready for horror? I'll give you horror. As I awoke this morning, when all sweet things are born, a robin perched upon my sill to signal the coming morn. The bird was fragile, young and gay, and sweetly it did sing. The thought of happiness and joy into my heart did bring. Am I getting you? I smiled softly at the song, and as it paused, a love, I gently closed the window and crushed its fucking skull. <laughs> Splintered spear shafts crack and fly, the horse and rider reel. They reel, they roll in clanging lists, and as the tide of combat stands, perfume and flowers fall in showers that lightly rain from ladies' hands. Sir Galahad, grade seven. Okay, sir, thank you.